what's up guys welcome back in this video we're going to be continuing on the app and we're going to start changing how this time works right here so we're going to show a human readable uh, time and if it's expired then we'll say like the auction is over and we'd also like to see it like tick down in real time so you can see how much time is left and as it's ticking down then you can go ahead and uh, you know if an auction is still open um, and so in this video, I'm going to be coding in Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm trying it out. I'm still using uh, Vim key bindings. Vim is what I usually use. Um, but I'm going to try this out. Let me know if you guys like this better from a viewer's point of view. Um, it might be slightly easier to follow. Um, and then also between videos, I linted the project. Um, this is what my ES lint looks like if you'd also like to lint to your project. Um, I have this on GitHub. If you want to just copy and paste this, then you can change it to the way you like it. Um, and then also, here's some libraries you're going to need to install if you want to uh, lint your project the way I did. Um, and I'll just uh, put this in the description below so you can copy and paste it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I, you want to see is an actual human readable string. And to do this, what we're going to be using is Moment. So Moment is a library that makes looking at time really nice. Um, and it handles all that stuff for you you don't want to do. So I was just playing around with it uh, in console to see what it looked like. Um, here's some Moment code, and this is basically what we're going to do. So we're going to get basically, this will be like the expiration date. And this gets the current time. And then we'll just take the difference in times. And right here, reformat and show it. So if I run this, you can see at the bottom, this is what the string we'll be looking at. The hour, seconds, or sorry, minutes, and then seconds. Okay, so we want to do yarn add moment, um, since we'll be using that library. And then I'm going to go into the uh, modules auctions reducers here. Um, and we're going to do stuff here. Um, you'll notice I have some errors. Uh, this is from ESLint. Um, and it just doesn't like how um, I wasn't using those. So if you are not familiar with the syntax, what this is doing is receive auctions as a string. So it actually gets the value of the string here uh, as the property. And then this, it just wants me to export default, but I'm going to be adding some more of uh, action or reducers later. So I'm going to keep that. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to import moment from moment and what we want to do is when we receive the auctions we are given a, a string with the time and so the first time what we want to do is we want to basically convert that into a uh, moment object because we don't want to keep creating that every time we update the time so what we're going to do is we're going to return an array here we're going to spread the payload um, and we're just going to map add moment. And so right here we'll create a method called add moment. And basically it'll just take a object and turn. So we're going to keep all the properties of the object and we're going to create M time, which will be a moment object, and this will be um, from the expiration date. So expiration date. So we create a uh, moment object based off of the expiration date here. And if we go back to my example, we actually need to pass in the format that the string is in, and it's an ISO 8, uh, 8601 or whatever. Um, and here we're just going to create, we can just pass m time in. And then I also want to, while we're at it, to do a uh, basically time left, and then we'll calc time left. So we'll create another function here called const time left, calc time left. And what it'll do is it'll take a um, expiration date. And it's going to compare this to the current time and tell you how much time is left. So for that, we're basically going to just copy and paste this. 
and we're going to clean it up. So we get the current time from moment right here. Don't need this. Then we want to get the time difference. So expiration date minus current time. Um, this will give you a time difference. And then here we want to make that const, make this const, and the duration. Um, this object just, we're just basically wrapping time diff in a duration object. This just lets us um, get, get it in hours, which we're going to need to do. So here will be our uh, basically a friendly time string, so I'll call it friendly time. We're going to do const hours is equal to d dot as hours. Okay, so here we want to do a check. This will be duration. We want to say if hours is greater than zero, else uh, complete. So if it's if there's no time left or it's equal to zero, we want to just return that uh, it's time left. We don't want to show a negative time that it's in the past. We'll just say uh, the auction is complete. Otherwise, we'll return. We can actually just compute that. And what this is doing is it's doing um, getting the floor of hours because hours is a decimal. So we want to get the just integer value and then we want to time diff. We want to convert the time diff into a moment object and then that way we can format it. And it just wants single. Alrighty. Um, let's see what doesn't it like. Unnecessary after return. Oh. I think it just wants that. Chilling space not allowed. Alright, cool. So now with this, oops, that should be you. Now with this, we have this new basically property we're adding to all the objects, auction objects, called time left. So now if I come over here, instead of expiration date, what I really want to see is time left. Now we'll come back, refresh. Now if we don't have any errors, uh, we should see it in hours, minutes, seconds. Oh, and we don't see anything. So let's come back over here and see what we did wrong. Um, and we just forgot to pass in m time. So we pass in our expiration date here, which we create turned into a moment object, and then we're good. Refresh, and cool. So this is way into the future here. Some of these are complete. Um, double checking this is working. Uh, I'll post an object here. So I'll post something in 2016, and oh, and we actually haven't done that yet. So if I refresh, um, we'll notice how that uh, this is actually in the uh, it's, show, it's showing us here, but this is wrong, right? Because we should be, this should be in the past. This should be complete, but it's not complete. So it looks like we got it backwards. So, should be current time minus expiration date. Let's see if that gives us the right. Complete, complete, complete. Now, for example, if I'm going to 2017, and let's say tomorrow, which is May the 1st, Uh, May the 1st is complete too. Let's see, let me put another time here uh, so we can know which one. Alright, this is complete too. Alright, so obviously I have something off with our calculation. I think this is right. 
expiration date, diff current time. Let's go back to JS bin and just play with this because it's a lot easier to, to work with here. All right, so let's run this. Um, so do, are we doing hours? We are checking hours, which is duration as hours. Return complete, time left. This looks good. And for example, if I choose 2018, this is 731. Okay, you know what? I think it's working now. I think we're good. So doing expiration date, diff, current time. This is the right format right here. Okay. But notice how when I was adding new times, like if a new time pops up here, so if I do like 23, notice how it's blank at first. Um, the reason for that is we did not add, um, basically we're adding this payload, but we're not doing add moment on it. So all we need to do is add moment. That way it gets that moment object in it. So now, for example, 12 comes in and we see it's time. Um, and notice if we refresh, 3241, 12, let's see, is 12 just missing? Oh, it's because we have more than 10. Okay. So just look at this. I was just going to show you guys how the time is ticking down. So 2635, 2619. Um, so every time I refresh, it calculates a new time, and it puts it in there. But what we'd like to do is just like set a timer every second it refreshes so we don't have to do that. And so that's what we're going to do next. So this is looking pretty good here. So we're going to create an action uh, for our auctions, and we're going to call it update time. And we'll create an action here called update time. And then in our reducer, update time is really easy. So all we do is we take the state and we do state dot map. And all we do is do we do calc time diff. We're basically updating time left. Let's actually create a new function called update time. Oops, and that should be a comma. Const update time. Oops. This takes a object, call it x. And what we're going to do is we're just going to return from this guy. And you know what? We don't even need to do it up here because I am just going to do everything in here. Okay. Get out, get out of here. Uh, this map is blocking. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to map through, the, we're going to go through each object, uh, each object, or each auction. Um, we're going to keep all the properties of it, and then we just basically need to calculate a new time left. So time left is equal to calc time left, and then pass in x dot uh, m time. And notice how we don't have to calculate a new m time, because that is the expiration date, which does not change. Um, at least unless they update the object in the database. Okay, so whenever we call update time now, it will now trigger this and it will run. Now to get this automated, so now update time is called just over and over, we're going to use this timer mixin. This timer mixin is nice because what it does is uh, it, it, it stops, we're going to create a timer which is going to run and it's going to call our thing every second. Um, and a lot of apps, as it says right here, crash because you don't unmount that. So this is a mix-in that basically uh, that Facebook gave us that makes it easy. So we're going to use that. So copy that. 
and it's going to be in our view over here. And notice how this is uh, using the create class. What we want to do is use ES6 classes, not like this. Um, and they point us to this library over here that allows us to add a mix in like this. So we're going to use this create, create, not create, react mix in library as well. So react mix in, react mix in, right? Yeah. So now we just need to add these to our project. Yarn, React, Mixin, and the other one was called React Timer Mixin. All right, so we'll just install the dependencies. And when those are good, we'll come down here and we'll do React Mixin. Then we'll call view at auctions dot prototype. And then we'll call our timer mixin. Now, now that we have that timer mix in, what that allows us to do is component did mount. We'll do this. Copy this. Except we're not doing set timeout only happens once. What we want to do is set interval. So that'll keep happening. And here we want to call this dot props dot update time. And we just want to keep triggering that action to happen every second. So now I just need to add update time to the uh, props. So if I go to the index, I can do update time here. All right, pass in through the props. And then we call it here every second. All right, let's see it go. All right, and we have a problem. Let's make sure we did everything correctly. So we added it to the props here. That looks good. We're getting it from the auctions action here. Here we're calling state.map, and we're going over, we're calculating time left based on x.m time. That looks good, we're listening. So it's probably something with our view here. Um, and yeah, it looks like I just misspelled interval. Awesome, and check out the times, they're just ticking down. And now what I wanna show you guys too is if I add one that's really close to being done, so it's April 30th, we can watch it as it ticks down and becomes complete. So, is this how far away is this? 2017. Okay, this is 25 minutes away. So if I subtract 25 minutes, that'll be 22. And if I go to 21, like 30, I think. Here we go. So three, two, one, and then it expires and it goes to complete. All right, so we have the auctions um, and the timers for those. So we can just watch as we scroll down, we can see all the timers being updated. So then we can watch our auctions and watch them expire and watch them and uh, check out when they're gonna be done. Um, so I hope you guys liked the video. That's it for now. Um, if you had any problems setting up the timer, or with the uh, moment, please leave a comment below and I'd be happy to help. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.